is Cynthia Sue Larson with RealityShifters.com, and I'm here today to talk to you about shifting the world with deep listening. And this is a subject that really relates to you no matter what's going on in your life. It's something that you can envision as being a good thing by being on the receiving end of it, by imagining what kind of world it would be like if everywhere you went, you were greeted with people that genuinely cared and wanted to know about how you're feeling, what you need, what's going on with you on a deep level, heart to heart. And if you can imagine that in your family, where you work, with your friends, in your neighborhood, everywhere, then you're getting a glimpse of what the world can be like when one person at a time we set the intention to shift the world with deep listening. And the way you can do this, it starts with getting in the zone, which is all about listening to yourself. It's about being in that meditative, calm state where you can hear that still, small voice within. Researchers have tracked the number of words that the average American has running in their head all the time, and that self-talk can be clocked at a rate of 300 to 1,000 words per, um, I think it's per minute, which is just a shocking statistic, if true. I haven't seen collaborating studies, but just the fact that there is that kind of self-talk going on. Yeah, that's right, 300 to 1,000 words a minute. And so if you're thinking about that for a minute, um, like how on earth is that possible? Well, sometimes our minds race. We can do that when we're agitated and worried. Usually we can dig ourselves into a deeper hole by getting into that state of agitation. It really does help to slow everything down to a stop, get really still, really quiet, and listen, just listen to yourself. So that's the first step in getting there. I had an experience with this back in the 1990s when I was involved with getting a school rebuilt and I was just about to go to a meeting with the school board when before I pulled out of my driveway I noticed that there was a rose blooming on the bush next to my car. And I felt inspired in that calmness, that state of being in the zone that I'm talking about to pick one of those roses. One in particular called to me. It was just a perfect rose with a beautiful salmon pink color. So I picked it, went to the meeting. When I got to the meeting, I got a further inspiration to put that rose in a glass of water or you know, right next to where one of the school board members would be coming out of closed chambers. And she in particular is one that I'd been hoping to connect with and listen to and talk to but hadn't managed to. So I left that rose for her. When she came out of closed session, oh, one more thing. I put a note on the rose, too. I said, please vote according to your conscience. What that meant was according to her heart, her mind. Um, Instead of doing the expedient thing that seems um, good for the short run, I wanted her to think about other people, about long-term decisions, the effects um, of everything. So when she came into the room, I was amazed to see she was wearing the same exact color as that rose. Exactly, a total perfect match. She picked up the rose, and she held it in her hand, and she rolled it around and just smiled faintly. She looked at the note, and she just rolled it around in her hand like that. And that was such an amazing moment for me, because I realized uh, that there is a way to connect with people that really is heart to heart. Sometimes even someone you don't think you could connect with, if you go to that place in the zone, you'll be guided by inspiration, by intuition, and you will do and say things in a very beautiful way that overcome differences that might have existed between the two of you. In my, I've written a blog post today um, that covers all of the material that I'm talking about, um, including details on how you can do some of three techniques for deep listening that I'm aware of that I've heard make a huge difference toward this goal of listening deeply. And one of them is active listening, which is a process of confirming, um, almost it sounds like you're repeating back what someone is saying, but you're doing it uh, first with your head, then with your heart, and then with a sense of from your gut of how this would affect you. It's bringing empathy into you in much the same way um, that you would expect someone to have empathy for you instead of just parroting back like, oh, you're saying this, and they're talking from their head. (laughs) You want to get them into their heart. You want to get them to really feel where you're coming from. When you're heard like that, it makes a huge difference. Another method is a clear 
Clearness Committee, which is a Quaker concept that was created in the 1660s in America. It's a spiritual process that has very simple rules, and those rules allow a focused person to acknowledge the past, present, and the future aspects of whatever area of concern they have. They share it with a committee um, that, that has members which convene, and all that the members can do is ask open, honest questions. Things like, um, did you ever feel like this before? And who are you trying to please? So this is a committee of people that are heart-centered, ideally, that are asking questions in a caring way. And if this goes really smoothly according to the process, it's a powerful, powerful tool to help someone feel better focused on the true nature of what's going on, what choices they're making, and to have a really complete sense of who they are. And then the third method I've talked in blogged and videoed about before, and that's Bohmian Dialogue. And David Bohm is a physicist who came up with an amazing idea of an uh, implicate order in the universe, that everything can be considered to be enfolded, and sometimes it comes out again. So it's, you could imagine it like a can of paint, and you drip a different color into that can of paint. So you start with white paint, drip a few drops of red, and stir it. And if you stir very slowly, you're going to see that through time, you're mixing the two colors up. If you reverse that, watch a movie in reverse, you'll see it goes back to the original order. So that's a basic, fast-level idea of this implicate order concept. But from that, David Bohm was a proponent of dialogue. And his idea was to get people talking from the heart and to really take time to listen deeply and fully to each person who's speaking. Once again, deep listening. So these are three different methods that are all outlined, actually, not just in my blog, but that article um, is also included as a chapter in this book, The Sacred Shift. I wrote three chapters in this book. Uh, one of them is all about deep listening and shifting the world with deep listening. And the other two have to do with raising children in this amazing world, children that are very gifted and special, that have intuitive abilities. And the other chapter is all about ethics and environmental um, processes, the way to have businesses that are very environmentally sound. Chapter title is Ethical, Ecological, Economics, Sustainable Prosperity. So this is an outstanding book, not just for my chapters, but also Steve Behrman, who's very funny, is included, Diana Cooper, Barbara Marks Hubbard, and many, many others. So until next time, I hope that you keep asking my favorite question, which is how good can it get? And you can ask yourself, how good can it get? When I practice the art of deep listening with my family and friends today. Until next time, I'm Cynthia Sue Larson with RealityShifters.com.